returning at this time from executive session. We did come out of executive session at 6.46 p.m. with a motion by Commissioner Devine, was second by Commissioner Lomanac. Vote was unanimous for us to come out of executive session. Again, on tonight, um, we do have an agenda set before us for our public session. Certainly like to welcome all of you back to our in-person meeting on tonight. And we will begin by calling this meeting to order with um, 6.1, which is our invocation by Commissioner Clyburn. Thank you, Chairwoman Harris. Uh, may we all bow our heads. As we discuss the affairs matters of our students and educators to make effective and appropriate decisions for Richland District 1, may we use our best judgment to make sure we are moving our students and educators towards upward and positive progress using science and medicine to guide us towards sensible and responsible solutions to protect all of our students and staff. And may we remain strong and steadfast to what we know as commissioners to be honest and truthful and we know has, what we know has real life consequences. Guide us in faith and works. We pray, amen. 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 Thank you so very much, uh, Commissioner Clyburn, for providing our invocation. Also, thank you for what you do in Richland School District 1. Um, <coughs> at this time, we will call for the adoption of the agenda. Move for approval, Madam Chair. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Devine, and it's been seconded by Commissioner Bishop. We'll open the floor for any question or discussion. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Eva, I'm having technical difficulties, so I'll just manually. Okay, the vote is unanimous to approve the agenda's adoption on tonight. Let the record also reflect that uh, Ms. Uh, King is not present for tonight's meeting. Uh, next, we will move forward to seven, which is our consent agenda. We'll read that in. Um, and if there's no objection from the board, we can take this all as one vote. Seven one is our minutes from February 8th. Seven two is our January 20, 2022 financials. Seven point three is a contract extension to provide refrigerated and non-refrigerated equipment repair and maintenance services. Seven four is a contract extension hosted web-based communication solutions. Seven five is a contract extension uh, for indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity IDIQ contracts for construction. 7-6 is a contract extension for tree maintenance services. 7-7 seven, seven is a contract extension for indefinite delivery, indefinite qu quantity IDIQ contracts for roof maintenance and repair services. And 7.8 is a contract extension for indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity IDIQ landscape maintenance. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Bishop. It's been seconded <clears throat> by Commissioner Devine. We will now open the floor for any questions or comments on any of the said items. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect that the vote is unanimous. The items, as previously stated in our consent agenda, has been approved. Thank you so much. We'll move now to uh, eight, which is the Office of Operations. And if there is no objection from the board, we'll read all these items in. If there are any questions, we'll open the floor afterwards. Um, eight one is a contract for furniture and furniture consulting services. Eight two is a contract for public announcement and bail replacement project. 8.3 is a contract for automotive technology student toolkits, and 8.4 is an energy management report. That, that report is separate, right, Dr. Wisbon? That is correct. That's going to be presented. Guys, I apologize. 8.1 through 8.3, please disregard 8.4. Um, three items have been read in. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. 
Second. To move by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Devine. We'll now open the floor for any questions or comments on the uh, three items that were stated. Commissioner Lomanet. Thanks, Chairwoman Harris. I've got a, a couple questions, um, starting with 8.02, which is the public announcement and bell replacement project. Okay, Ms. Alden. Mr. Leslie. Okay. Yes, good afternoon. Sorry, sorry, I can't, it's hard to see you, and it's hard to see me. Oh, sorry. Um, I mainly wanted to talk about the process. This looks like we want to use ESSER 3, the American Rescue Plan dollars. That is correct. Usually with federal money, we use it and get reimbursed, right? Um, in this particular case, they, uh, we were approved for the funds and received the funding, so they're paying for it up front. Okay, so that's what I was going to ask. So has, Mr. This, Carlin can address. has this particular use been approved? with the ESSER funds? Don't we get reimbursed? Can you turn up Mr. Carlin's mic? Thank you. Uh, we have been approved, but we do the work and then get reimbursed. But with the pre-approval. So there's no chance. I mean, I, I guess the reason I was, question, was asking is this it looked like it was a little outside the allowable use categories, and I just wanted to make sure that it's been approved so we won't get deemed on the back end. That's correct. We had it approved. Okay. And um, Mr. Leslie, is this all, almost every school in the district? It is every school in the district. Okay. And are the current, what, I guess, what's going on with the current systems that make them uh, in need of replacement? Well, the current systems were installed in the late 90s. Um, they have reached the point where they can't be maintained any longer. At some of the schools, they've gone completely non-functional and we can't find parts to repair them anymore or the expertise who knows how to repair them anymore. So therefore, they're well, over, well past their life expectancy and overdue for being replaced. And I assume that public, the intercom systems are, in addition to you need them to make announcements, it's a safety issue too, is that right? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Um, that's the, all the questions I have about eight point I did have one about 8.03, but okay. I'll yield. Okay, you continue. Okay. Um, the automotive technology student toolkits, can, I, maybe I'm not smart enough to just figure out what they are based on the memo. Can somebody just describe what these are? Is, is that Kate? Okay. Is Jennings? Mr. Dickens. Oh, Mr. Dickens got it. Yeah. There he is. Good evening. My name is Chris Dinkins, CTE Director. Uh, the Automotive Technology Toolkits or Snap-on Toolkits, uh, fully assembled kits with the tools inserted. We have four of those kits right now. We're replacing those four. The tools are basically worn out. And then we're adding two more to that as well. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Snap-on. It's a tall, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of four and a half to five feet tall toolkit assembly with all of the foam insert so that tools are quickly identified if they're not where they're stored to be. Okay, thanks. I just wanted to make sure I knew what it was. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions or comments on any of the items? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. All the said items previously listed under Office of Operations have been approved. Uh, at this time, we'll move to 8.4 to our energy management report by Mr. Raymond Perkins. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Witherspoon, I want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you this annual report that uh, we provide. Uh, tonight we have the uh, South Carolina Energy Manager of the Year, 
uh, Miles Hanley here to present, and we also have the Snyder project manager, uh, Mr. Justin uh, Set, uh, to here with us to answer questions if you have any. Okay. Thank you so much. And as Mr. Hanley is coming forth, if we would give him a round of applause, because I think you didn't hear, he's the South Carolina Energy Manager of the Year. Before he begins his report, it just goes to show the great things that are happening in Richland One. Mr. Hanley, you have the floor. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Chair, Chairwoman, Board, Superintendent. Um, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to present the energy report for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, this is going to be my focus for this presentation. Um, we're going to look at challenges, challenges that we have when it comes to energy conservation, saving our utility, uh, reducing our utility budget, what factors impact our energy usage throughout the district, and of course, um, things that we did to save energy for the 2020-2021 school year. And of course, future opportunities. What do we plan on doing in the future as far as energy conservation and saving ut our utility funds? Technology usage increase, as you know, as technology, as we increase the uses of technology in schools, that's going to impact the energy that we use. It's just nature of the, of the beast. Um, and that's something that we have to continue to monitor and continue to do what we can to mitigate the uh, uh, usage of energy. Weather variations, uh, we've all heard about global warming. And some may say, well, global warming might mean that in the wintertime we don't use as much energy because the build, buildings are warmer. Well, in South Carolina, sometimes that requires us to use air conditioning in the wintertime. So weather variations continue to be an issue that we have to deal with. Some in athletic usage increases. Um, to be honest, because of COVID, that has not been as much of a challenge as it has been in the past, but we still see that as being a challenge in the future. Um, using our facilities in the summer and when school is closed. Um, environmental standard mandates, whenever we replace HVAC equipment, we have to um, bring our standards up to the, to the latest fresh air requirement, for example. If you, bring in fresh, if you bring in increased fresh air in the wintertime, you have to heat that air. If you bring in fresh air in the summertime, you have to cool that air. That requires energy, it requires costs, so it's something that we have to look at. And of course, carbon footprint. Um, we hear that word used quite a bit. Um, as citizens of this state, we want to do our best to not to reduce our carbon footprint, reduce our usage of fossil fuels, because as we know, it's good for the environment. And although that is not our, our main charge, it is something that we as a school district would want to do. And of course, it's budget constraints. We are a school district. Um, as a school district, our main focus should be to educate students. And sometimes when you do that, um, other ancillary things, such as saving money and energy, kind of come force the wayside a little bit. So those are challenges that we have to deal with. Um, but we, um, we are doing what we can. What factors impact our energy usage? Well, COVID-19, um, and, and not in the way you might think. Because of the fact when COVID first struck, we, had, we went to hybrid learning, we went to virtual learning, Actually, we use less energy in our buildings because of COVID. So although COVID's not a good thing, as far as energy conservation, it did impact our energy in a positive way because we use less energy. COVID also impacted our, our typical building construction program. Because of less construction, less energy um, was used by contractors who were doing work in our buildings. Uh, but as we know now, we're getting back to normal, so those things are going to be different. And of course, I mentioned global warming before. That does impact our energy usage, um, and we do what we can to, um, to meet that challenge. Projects impacting energy savings. Although we use less energy due to COVID, we still implemented projects throughout the district to make sure that our energy costs and utility costs are lowered. Um, so these are some of the projects we did the last uh, few years, within the last few years, that impacted our usage. Haywood Conference Center, which is used quite often by the district. Um, we replace the um, T8 for resident lighting with um, LED lighting. Since that is a venue that's used quite a bit, that's going to give us some savings. Um, SAB lighting controls. Um, in our HR area and in our finance areas, those are areas that often work out of hours. 
So it would make sense to put in controlled lighting that we can control so we can monitor how much lighting we use out of hours and during hours. So that was a project we did. Modest savings, but it was a saving nonetheless. And what you're going to find out with a lot of energy measures projects is that one project is not going to save you a whole lot of money, but it's the accumulation of these projects all working together to get you savings. Arden Elementary, we replaced the entire school from T8 to T12. Fluorescent lighting, we converted it to LED lighting, and we also implemented lighting controls. That's a substantial savings at that school. Um, the big project we did, the last really large project that we did in-house, the Administrative Buildings LED Lighting Project. For those of you who are in administrative buildings, you would have noticed that we replaced the lights in all of our administrative buildings. That would be CSF, where I, where I sit, um, SAB, Line Street, Waverly, and the motor, motor pool. We converted that, all those facilities to LED lighting at a substantial savings to the district. And that was a large project. And that's one of the projects that contribute to the savings that we've had recently. And of course, the Snyder performance contract. Although that project has not completed, some of the measures that we've implemented to date have started accumulating savings. And I'm going to talk about that project in a little bit more detail. I mentioned the Snyder performance contract. I'm not going to go over all of the details, all of the numbers, but um, the, uh, the, that project was done at 15 of our schools. And if you can see the green, I know you all have the, you can probably see it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, as of December of 2021, between December of 2020 and December of 2021, although the energy measures are not fully, have not been fully implemented, we at this time have already saved about $250,000. So um, if you look to the right of that graph and you see that the, the straight line mm -hmm. at the beginning, where that straight line starts of, uh, I think it's around October of 2022, that's when Snyder anticipated the project finishing, and that's when the quote-unquote clock starts um, on that performance contract. What do I mean by that? Um, that's when the guarantee savings kick in. And if they don't save us if this, the money that they said they would, they have to cut us to check. We don't know about that. Um, but if you notice, that, that graph starts at around $100,000 when they feel that the savings would be that first month, but we're already at $250,000. So we are saving more at this point in time than when they anticipated when the projects are finished. Uh, so that shows us that the project is re has really been effective. Savings to date on the performance contract. Now, what I don't show in that graph was the savings that we received from the voice over IP, the new phone system that's been implemented. To date, that savings is about 200,000 plus. Mm -hmm. Now, I say plus because what that the $200,000 in savings comes from contracts, maintenance contracts that we no longer had to re, no, that we that we could that we didn't have to renew because of the new voice over IP system. What that does not show is the month-to-month -month savings that we're getting from those phone systems. And the reason we haven't been able to calculate that to date is because we still have some phone lines with AT&T that we have to flesh out. Once that's all completed, then we'll be able to figure out what we are saving month-to-month. -month. So that $200,000 is really a conservative figure. We're saving a lot more money on the voice over IP. So if we combine the saving from the voice over IP with the savings to date on the energy measures from the performance contract, we've saved to date approximately $450,591. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to amaze you about that is when you look at the next few charts, the next chart after this one, but before we get to that, um, as you know, the, the board has allowed us to add a solar component to that phase one. Um, and when we combine, when the project is finally finished and it goes out to 20 years, Snyder has said they guarantee that we will get a savings in phase one of $27.7 million over the life of that project. If you combine the solar savings of $29.3 million, Overall, we expect to see a savings of $57.1 million. Now, as I said earlier, those numbers are, those figures are conservative. We expect to see higher, but those are the guarantees that they have, they have given us. And I think we're well on our way. Solar, that's a big thing. A lot of we see the solar panels on people's roofs. Um, we are very aggressive in implementing solar in our schools, implementing renewable energy. Um, that's part of the solar project. 
we are implementing solar at those 15 schools. This is just to give you an idea of those of you who haven't been out to the schools. At St. Andrews Middle School is one of the few schools where we have panels in place already, as well as inverters. Um, you can see the picture, showed the first picture, shows the, um, what's going to the ballast that holds the solar panels in place. The next one shows the panels on top of that ballast. Um, and so is the third picture. And then the last one shows the inverters. The inverters are the, is the, the item that takes that DC current that's produced by the solar energy and converts it into um, alternating current. So, uh, and this will be happening at all 15 schools in varying degrees, depending on how much uh, energy we will be generating via solar. The status of the performance contract as of February 4th, 2022, when I put this slide together, as you see, we are not even, we are only 100% complete in two of the energy measures, that's the plug loads and the building envelope where we seal up the building tight. Um, all the other ones are at varying degrees of um, completion, and we have already gotten the $250,000 in savings. So I expect that to go up as those other energy measures get to 100% um, completion. And many of you have seen this slide before. This is just what we expect the impact from the performance contract. Um, prior to phase one of the performance contract, at those 15 schools, we were spending about $4.4 .4 million a year on our utilities. Post phase one, we expect to spend about $3.3 .3 million. And that, when I say post phase one, I'm talking about not counting the solar. When you throw the solar piece in, then we expect to save some $2.2 million, $2.4 million in energy. I mean, in course, per year over the life of that 20-year of that project. So we expect this, to, this is going to be a very win-win a, a for the district. Now getting back to our electrical costs over the last year, what you're going to see is in 2019 to 2020 school year, we spent 7.48 million, 7.5 million. And in the electrical cost for the 2020-2021 was about 7.5 million. So it appears to be flat. So you, one may say, well, did we really save any energy? Did we really save any dollars? But if you really look at the 2019, if you think about 2019-2020, that was a COVID year. Mm -hmm. That was a year where we had a major impact when we went to virtual learning and hybrid learning for a good portion of the year. Yet, we did not increase we basically stayed flat. Why did we stay flat when the 2020, 2021 was basically a full year? Because of the energy measures that we've implemented. Mm -hmm. those, those measures are having an impact. Mm -hmm. That's good. And you can see the impact a lot clearer if you look at the budget. Um, administration in 2018, 2019, implemented, put, in the, put $11 million for the budget for the year, utility budget. But the actual usage was only, and I'm trying to see that, 8.2, .2, thank you, 8.2 <laughs> million. 20, 2020, 2019 to 2020, uh, they said because they, was, they saw the, the, uh, the, what we were doing was working, they lowered the uh, utility budget to 10 million, and it was 7.7. .7. Now, that was the COVID year. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, it was also about 7.7 .7 million. And but because of the success we've been having with our energy measures and combined with the performance contract, uh, the, the administration decided to lower the utility budget to nine million. And we'll see where that will be at the end of the year. I anticipate that being even lower than That's the good. nine million for sure. That's good. So we are doing well. Mm -hmm. We are doing well. We're saving money. We're saving the district money. Mm -hmm. So what are the opportunities for improvement? Well, because the Snyder project is doing so well, we are going to recommend that we go with the phase two with the Snyder project. It would, be, it would not be fair for the other schools to not benefit from the infrastructure um, improvements, from the energy savings, that these 15 schools that are in the performance contract are, are, benefit, are, are getting at this po point in time. So we will recommend that, and we're working on that now. Um, we are also looking at possible renewable energy projects. We as a district, we are citizens of this state. We want to be responsible citizens of that state, and being a responsible citizen means not contributing to, um, to gases that impact our, our ozone layer, making sure that we produce energy that's safe, we produce energy that is healthy. And so we are going to continue to look at renewable projects 
other solar projects and other renewable um, things as, we, as the years go on. So we're not stopping with the 15 schools that we did. We're looking at other ways that we can implement renewable energy in our district. And one of the things that I think is going to make the, one of, uh, a really huge impact um, as the chairman for the energy conservation team for the district, I've charged the team to look at ways we can impact behavioral changes in the district. Now, what do I mean by behavioral changes? If we can get the administration, we can get teachers, and we can get students all thinking energy conservation, turning out lights, pulling out plugs, things of that nature, things which may not seem like it makes a big deal, but if you get the entire district thinking that way, that's going to impact your energy course as well. So the energy conservation team is working on a way on how we can get that out to the schools and get that out to administration, getting everyone to think energy conservation. And if you can impact behavioral changes, that's going to make a large impact on the utility bill. So that's it. So if you have any questions, I'll take them at this time. OK. Um, Mr. Miles, first of all, thank you for that awesome presentation, not only in um, recognizing you for being a state awardee, but also knowing that you're saving this district such a great deal of money. And we appreciate that. I think a lot of times folk don't realize that we got to stay on top of a whole lot of stuff. So to hear a report come to us and that says we're saving millions of dollars a year of our taxpayers' money, and even knowing that, Dr. Wisboom, I believe our district is one of very few here in the state of South Carolina is really going towards solar when it comes to our schools. So I, I, I salute uh, uh, Raymond Perkins and his entire shop for bringing this project to the district and, and seeing the benefit of it, even though it isn't fully implemented, you know, we're saving money. So we can only imagine what it's going to look like, uh, uh, Commissioner Devine, once it's completed. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you so very much for your report on the night. Very thorough with helping us understand the power of, as you stated earlier, I, I went to a school the other day before I could walk out the room, the classroom, the lights shut off. And the kids told me that that was some kind of special <laughs> gadget we have in place that if there's no motion in the room, it kind of signals the system to shut it down. So again, lots of nuts, bolts, moving parts in running a school district. But just to see that really made me feel good as a board member that we take a, a, a strong, hard stance in when, when it comes to saving the taxpayer money. I, I really appreciate that. I'm going to open the floor right now to my colleagues for any comments or questions that they may have on our energy management report that's been given to us. Come on, Clyburn, you good? All right, on this side, Commissioner Devine. Thank you, uh, Chairwoman Harris. Thank you um, for this report and congratulations to you as well. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the work that you do across um, our district and then across the state. Just a few questions and these, these are really just follow-up questions from our initial uh, approval of this project uh, back in 2020 or 2019. Um, I think I, I think it may be answered, but um, you talked about the status as of February the 4th, the energy measure and the percentage complete. Is there an overall completion of installation of the infrastructure in this phase one project if we're at 50%? Yes, it was phase one. And, and Phase one is made up of a number of energy measures. We're doing lighting, we're doing HVAC, we're doing water. We did the um, in envelope, we did plug loads. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing transformers, um, replacing um, inefficient transformers, efficient ones. So all of those measures together, we're at those, those percentages I show of completion. That's where we're at at this point. Only two of them were at 100%. And that was the building envelope and the plug loads. Okay. All the other ones are not. Very good. Um, I'm not sure if this would go to you or to teaching and learning, but how have we incorporated our students in these energy saving strategies? I'm going to let um, Justin answer that, but in my last conversation, the last meeting that I had with Justin, because we do meet biweekly, um, they are getting ready to present the curriculum to the district. So I'm going to let him touch on that. Before Justin starts speaking, let's congratulate Justin. He got married two weeks ago, I believe. Congratulations. I didn't expect to see you tonight. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Good evening, members of the board. 
Uh, it's great to be here with you. Um, that was an excellent question, and I appreciate that question, Chairman Devine. Um, I actually just this morning submitted to Dr. Broussard the full curriculum, where, so she's in the process of going through that right now. And what that is is a, a solar curriculum that we have packaged together with the solar panels. So it's going to turn those 15 schools into active live learning labs for the students to be able to measure and look at real-time energy savings as it's being generated on the roofs of the schools that they're learning in. And there's 10 different learning activities and a number of different lessons in there where they're going to learn about how the energy is actually converted from the sun all the way to the outlet in the classroom. So it's a very comprehensive uh, lesson plan, and that's just one, one of the components that we're working with um, as a part of the, the energy management curriculum. Very good. I look forward to hearing that once we um, get that in place and look forward to the success of that. I have uh, another question. Um, well, that was the other question. Do we have a course or curriculum? Um, will we also expand to recycling also as a component of this, or will we just strictly stay with the energy savings component? And that may again be a staff, Dr. Witherspoon or um, Dr. Brazard. That may be a staff question. Yeah, we'll do we? Make, do we? Will we um, have an opportunity to um, expand this energy management or energy savings into another component? And I, I know we do some recycling. I'm not sure how that uh, comes into in, into into effect here. A good part of our work in, in teaching and, and learning is looking at things like the curriculum that's been provided by Stoddard Electric this afternoon and the, the um, many lesson plans and so forth that we get from other sources uh, such as um, recycling companies. We get information all the time and so what we always do is look at the materials that we receive and see where they fit into our curriculum so that we are supporting the existing curriculum and not just adding on. So our science um, consultants are currently vetting that material. I sent it out earlier today, so they are currently reviewing that. We already have recycling, right. though, as a part of our curriculum. All right, very good. And then um, my last question is, as we look uh, towards the future and we look into phase two, I know you mentioned just a little bit of it. Uh, just tell me again or tell us again, when do we anticipate hearing about phase two? Just approximate, you don't have to be exact, maybe just approximate timeline. Actually, we just started out discussions about phase two. Uh, we want to investigate it, put together the right information so we can bring that to you. So it's something that we're in the process of doing uh, on the staff level right now. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Absolutely. Any other questions or comments? Commissioner Myers? I had a question about phase two, but if the planning process is probably not that far yet. Do y'all estimate how long it could take for phase two to be finished yet? Not quite? Okay. We haven't even got to that point yet. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right, seeing none here, and thank you so very much again for the report. We look forward to you all coming back to us with whatever plans it is that you have for phase two. Phase one is doing us well, so we are anxiously anticipating phase two coming before us. All right, we'll move forward at this time. That was uh, information, so no action is necessary. Um, we will now move forward to uh, Office of Human Resources, which is 9, 9 9.1, which is a personnel HR update, Dr. Long. Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, and Dr. Witherspoon, good evening. good evening. The personnel human resource updates were provided for you all during the executive session as information. I'll answer any questions if you all have any. Okay, this is an information item. Floor is open for any questions or comments. <coughs> Seeing none, hearing none, we'll move on to 9.2, leave of absence. Dr. Long. The administration recommends approval for the leave of absence without pay for the employee with the initials EB. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Devine. We'll open the floor for any questions and comments. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Vote is unanimous, the ayes have it. The leave of absence has been approved as previously stated. We'll now move to 9-3, which is the hiring of personnel, Dr. Long. 
The administration recommends hiring the teachers on the attached list for the 2021 and the 2020, 2021-22 and the 2022-23 academic years. There are two listed for the 21-22 year and six for the 22-23 year. The administration so recommends. You've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. Moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner mm -hmm. Devine. We'll now open the floor for any questions or comments. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Let the record reflect the vote is unanimous. The ayes have it. The hiring of personnel has been approved. And 9.4, former employee personnel matter, Dr. Long, uh, will Mr. The, Chair Matthew Hazel. The Regarding a personnel matter with further investigation, the administration will provide additional information. Okay, this is an information item. Floor is open for any question or comment. Seeing none, hearing none. We will move um, um, forward uh, to uh, the office of the board. 10.1, parent request to be heard, Ms. Miniweather. Chairwoman Harris. Board of School Commissioners, Dr. Witherspoon, the hearing office recommends that the board not hear the two appeals that the parent was that was presented to the board during an um, executive session. The administration so recommends. Okay, you've heard the recommendation of the administration. What's the pleasure of the board? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Myers, second by Commissioner Devine, Commissioner, I'm sorry, Clyburn. For point of clarification, a yes vote would uphold uh, the request of the hearing board. A no vote would uh, grant the parent uh, request to be heard by the board. Just want to clarify that before you all um, take the vote. Did I say, state that correctly? You did. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Point of clarification, a yes vote, their, their motion is for us to approve not hearing. That's right. So if we vote yes, that means we are agreeing not to hear it. If we vote no, that means we are agreeing to hear it. And I just want to clarify the vote because uh, once we vote, it's voted. Okay, uh, we open the floor at this time for any question or comments. Commissioner Devine. Not a comment, point of clarification. Okay. A yes vote would be to uphold the recommendation of the administration. That is correct. If it does not pass, the, it just, it just died, it, it doesn't happen. Now then somebody can come up with a positive motion to hear the matter. That is correct. Okay. All right. Just want to make make sure I'm good. Okay. All right. Are, Thank are you. you making a motion? No. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> so, so in in other words, if we vote no, then we will hear the matter. Yes. Mm -mm. They're yeah. asking us to yeah. deny yeah. the request. It needs to be an affirmative. Yeah, that's right. Right. So there would have to be a secondary a second. motion. Correct. That's right. Absolutely. Everybody sh straight on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know it got a little tangled and mangled, so, Mr. Lomine. Wait, I, I thought I understood it. A no vote means we would hear. No. Okay, so we just changed that. Okay. Right, right. Gotcha. If, so if we if we're it in the affirmative. Correct. Gotcha. Right. Thank you. Right. We'd have to be a, right. Okay. So everybody good before we call for the vote? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Everybody, ma okay. Let's call for the vote. I can't vote. <laughs> oh. Okay. 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 Okay, uh -huh. it's a three-three vote. The motion yeah. failed. Right, the motion failed. Okay, motion failed. Right. All right, Mr. Devine. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that we hear the parent request to be heard. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Devine that the Board of Commissioners hear the parent's request to be heard. It's been properly seconded by Reverend Dr. Aaron R. E. Bishop. You say it twice if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, we'll open the floor at this time for any questions or comments. Seeing none, hearing none, we will take this vote manually. We can take it electronically. Okay, Ms. Evenham worked it out on the screen. Um, we will now call for the vote. Clarification. A, so that we, that a yes vote yes. would be for us to hear, and a no vote would be for us not to hear. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Okay, the ayes have it. We have five yeas and one nay. The motion passed. We will hear the parents' request to be heard. Thank you so much, Mr. Pamela. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have 10.2, um, which is the board report. And this is an opportunity for the board to speak on uh, non-agenda items or whatever that they've been involved in throughout the uh, school uh, weeks prior to um, coming to the meeting. Uh, now, the board does participate in uh, chat with the chairs. Uh, at our middle schools as well as our high schools on a regular basis. We are in our schools uh, right now virtually and hopefully working to move towards back to in person um, with our chats. Um, so we'll open the floor at this time for any board report that we may have. Mr. Lomanek. Um, I, first of all, I had a great time this morning at Sandell with Ms. Allen's class reading about a rocket ship in uh, a little kid's dream and the first question that I got uh, from one of the kindergarten students was where are the bathrooms on the rocket ship and I just thought <laughs> this kid is really sitting there wondering that the whole time I was reading this book um, and, and I was fascinated by that. Um, the second thing I want to say and I'll keep this very brief, um, I'm wondering Dr. Witherspoon if you know I've and I've got the, the social media scars to prove it. I've been a real defender of the district's handling of, of COVID-19, the mask, and following DHEC guidance, which I know has changed. And when it does change, sometimes it changes in nuanced ways that folks then have to figure out and, and, and change policies and communicate them to people. Um, and, and I do think there have been days that we were able to stay in school, especially in January when districts like Greenville didn't have enough staff. Um, today's, and, and part of the reason that I've advocated that we follow DHEC is because, I, it's not because I want someone to be mad at DHEC rather than me, it's because DHEC have people who are experts in this, and, and I'm certainly not. Um, but today's change in DHEC's policies, I think, do signal a, a real shift in their focus that, that, that I think we need to pay attention to. But there are also some good points about immunocompromised teachers and students. So I'm wondering if we can, in light of DHEC's uh, very different stance now, I think, on universal masking, which is not a phrase that's used in DHEC's policy now, if, uh, if we can at the next meeting or the meeting after really come up with a, a timeline and a map for what we're going to do and what things trigger it. And if there's a way for us to switch to mask optional, but also have some policies in place that protect um, students who are immunocompromised, sickle, you know, I work with a kid who's got sickle cell, so I know that that's a, a real issue, but um, I, I do think we're gonna need to transition out of this phase, obviously, and I, it'd be nice if we could um, provide some sort of uh, metrics that are gonna guide us and ways that we can protect uh, some of the students that need that extra layer of protection while also transitioning out of the mandate. So that's all I wanted to say, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lomanek. Any other reports? Commissioner Devine. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Dr. Witherspoon, not sure who this goes to. Um, can you provide us a budget calendar update? Absolutely. Um, Mr. Carlin, I know there was some information he did send out, but I, he will certainly be able to give a brief uh, update at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, the information we sent out earlier goes through the public hearings or input sessions that we're going to have. I don't have enough information at this time. I have not been able to get one from the county as far as the calendar. Uh, and as soon as we get that, I've been on the phone with trying to get one today and, and yesterday, uh, we can update you with where we're gonna be. We're gonna be in about the same place as we've always been, but I'd rather have their calendar to know more uh, what, where are we're gonna set our dates. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Witherspoon. Thank you, Ms. Carla. 
Um, another question. Um, I just know we're just in that season. Um, this weekend, uh, the South Carolina School Boards Association, we had our annual conference, um, several uh, informative uh, workshops that we had, and one was on a legislative update regarding um, uh, the governor's budget and um, staying in line with the budget calendar. Um, is there any way that we can receive an update on the governor's funding plan as it pertains to Richland One? Mm -hmm. I've seen their overall for the entire state, mm -hmm. but I'd like to get some additional information uh, for the governor's funding plan as it pertains to Richland One. And, and, and that may come in the form of a, of a work session as we've had in the past, and, 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 and that's fine. I'm just um, mm -hmm. asking, can we get an update uh, of mm -hmm. the governor's funding plan? Yeah, I looked at the information briefly. I haven't had time to, to sort through it and, and come up with numbers. But um, one thing that I did see is that they're listing seven districts that would be not funded according to the plan, and they would be funded at the current year's budget. There are seven districts. And if I'm looking at the information correctly, we're not one of those seven right. districts. So we should get some type of increase based on the, the governor's plan. But I'm going to have to do some calculations to see where we're at. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, along those lines, I got one more. Then I'll, yes, sir. Um, finish up. Um, do you want to, and this may be a Dr. Witherspoon's uh, superintendent's report, do you want to congratulate C.A. Johnson High School making it to the third round of the basketball playoffs? Proud of the, the uh, Hornets and, and where they stand. Um, we did have three students who went to the state wrestling match as well um, this past weekend. And so we want to um, congratulate them as well. And so just want to say thank you to um, those students and to our staff at C.A. Johnson uh, for having student athletes um, taking us to the um, third round of the playoffs, which is tonight uh, at Great Falls. Uh, we're uh, praying for a win, and we shall see what happens after tonight. Madam Chair, that concludes my uh, remarks. Thank you so much, Mr. Commissioner Devine. We also have Keenan's girls, Laura Richland's girls, boys. and Flora's boys, boys and, girls. and girls. So we, we, we got a lot of them still in there, and I appreciate you bringing that up, Mr. Mm -hmm. Devine, because I, I like to stress another thing that you know you can be proud to hang your hat on as a district. Uh, we have a 2.0 policy. That's right. So these students are not just winning on the fields and the courts, but they have the academics to go with it. Uh, and those coaches, I have to applaud them wherever Coach Metz is. They stay on top of those grades. So um, they're winning in the classroom and on the court, and we couldn't be more proud of them. I, I can say, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Bishop, since we've been on the board, we've gone to a state championship every, every year, year. Every year. Mm -hmm. For one of our high schools and parents, you know, that's something, st staff, faculty, that's something to celebrate because there are some districts that never make it to any of those championships and have our students out there playing and representing this district. And also winning in the classroom says a whole lot about who our students are. So something just to hang our head on and be proud about. Any other reports before I do mine? Commissioner Bishop. Uh, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And yes, uh, the Weekend of Champions at Colonial Life always hosts one of our schools. And I do support uh, the acknowledgement of that 2.0 policy, that C policy. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Witherspoon, we did hear some of the community uh, speak about masks. You know, I, I can't help but reflect on the fact that I think on, on our last, in our last meeting, we did a mass purchase, a mass, at a big amount. Um, you know, it was a nice amount of money that we spent. And so as uh, you and your administration are preparing uh, to think about, um, you know, what would be next steps, you know, I, I, would, I would like the community to also understand that we are trying to be stewards over the taxpayer dollars by purchasing these masks. Mm -hmm. And so when these masks come in, when, when would these masks come in? You know, I, it'll be here soon. Do we just let these masks stay in the warehouse and not use them? You know, that's something to consider as far as uh, that discussion. So I uh, just want to bring that back to, uh, to light that we did just make that mask, purchase a mask. Um, to protect the students. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bishop. And the scary thing about that is COVID is not over. Mm -hmm. That's the scary thing. Um, are there any other reports before I go to mine? Commissioner. Oh. Oh. 
Commissioner Clyburn and then back to Commissioner Devine. Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to uh, make a comment about the uh, South Carolina uh, School Board Association um, uh, conference uh, that we attended uh, this weekend um, where we were uh, thoroughly uh, exposed to, you know, um, some new trends and um, new ways to think about uh, what we're all experiencing, what we've all been experiencing uh, going on three years now um, to include that. Um, but just new ways to, um, you know, make sure that we're educating our, our children in the proper way, um, you know, even as far as covering, you know, some some misnomers out there on um, uh, CRT, uh, that it does not uh, exist in our schools, our public school system. Um, so even that was covered. And I just wanted to, um, you know, just make a comment on, you know, how much I value um, being exposed to new ways of thinking. So that was one uh, comment that I wanted to make. And also, I did enjoy myself in, as well. Um, Commissioner Lomay mentioned, um, visiting uh, William S. Sandal Elementary School. Right. Uh, so I want to thank you, say thank you to Principal uh, Claudia Brooks McCullum uh, for inviting us. And um, I really enjoyed uh, reading a book that I chose, Happy in Our Skin, uh, to a uh, kindergarten class, Miss um, Jackson, and uh, a first grade class. Um, uh, so I just wanted to uh, make that comment. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Kleinburn, uh, Commissioner Devine. Thank you, and I too want to echo what uh, Commissioner Lomack and Commissioner uh, Clyburn has both said. I too had a chance to read to a kindergarten class, to Ms. Hickson's class, Ms. Williams' class at um, Sandell Elementary uh, as well. Uh, the name of my book was The King of Kindergarten, uh, <laughs> dealing with a young man whose first day uh, he rode the big yellow bus, which he called his um, his um, wagon to school, and <laughs> uh, and he talked about all the all the uh, people that students that he met and his fellow classmates. So again, thank you uh, for allowing us to um, to participate at the school level as well. Thank you, Chairman Harris. Thank you so very much, Commissioner Myers. I would like to talk about the conference that I had attend this weekend. Um, just give you some little key ideas, what I thought was very important for me and as well for my colleagues, just some key ideas. We had an opportunity to hear a speaker from Mr. Kevin. Um, this guy had dreams to actually climb in the highest mountain ever. That might sound like a little easy, basic dream, but he managed to actually accomplish his dream with no legs and no arms. That's amazing. We also had opportunity for our key speakers who talk a little bit about no excuse, and that gave us details about being biased. A lot of people um, see their future or express their feeling based on things they had attend in their lifestyles. That just gave us an opportunity this weekend to open eyes. We sit on the board for Richland One, so we are not just here to base things on eye opinion or just a certain school, di school area issues. We had to look at the whole school as one, as Richland One, and that gave us an opportunity this weekend just to understand how sometimes you could be a little bit biased about things that come across your desk. Um, and one thing I definitely took home, and I'm going to always remember, is everyone have a challenge in life, and regardless of your disability or your thoughts in your life and challenging, is how you overcome your challenge, guys. Original One is not the only one dealing with the mass mandate challenge, COVID-19 challenge. Everyone is dealing with it. We are trying our best as Richland One as a whole to make sure we thank the process to make sure everyone at Richland One is being safe. That's all, Ms. Harris. Thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Myers. Commissioner Bishop. Madam Chair, point of privilege, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to, first of all, as a product of the school district, um, uh, thank, thank Richland One for giving me a foundation mm -hmm. um, as a learning enterprise and uh, as a point of personal privilege. Excuse me? I was going to do it. Oh, you're going to do uh, it? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Well, I, put your mask I, back I, on. I, I put my mask back on. Put your mask back on. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, it's your meeting. Thank, thank, thank you, yes, so I, I was allowing my colleagues to get their report out because y'all know my report be lengthy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, ma so, so since since he already started it, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate my colleague, Reverend Doctor Doctor. Aaron R. E. Bishop on uh, defending his dissertation and will be graduating with his doctorate degree, but not only him, his wife as well. Oh, Two yeah. products of Richland One. <laughs> Let's give it up for them. We're certainly proud of him and we look forward to being there to celebrate with you. Yes, ma'am. And the reception, the food, all that other stuff. Look forward well, to being there. Um, let me um, begin with my board. Oh, yeah. Let me just let me respond. I'm, I'm sorry. Madam Chair. No. Okay. As, as I was going to say, but thank you for the <laughs> acknowledgement. Um, I just want to thank this 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 board and even this administration staff for your support. Um, as I went through the process of pursuing my PhD, um, and so um, as I uh, know this is a milestone in my life. I'm praying that this uh, level of leadership and, and learning will be something of value to this district mm -hmm. from this seat and beyond. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bishop. And I'll be honest with you, after you post it, I went online to look at the fees because I was going to go back and finish mine. <laughs> I said, nah, not, not right now. So congratulations again to you. Um, in my board report, a few things I want to mention. Uh, number one, I want to thank Alcorn Middle School and the Pan Ensemble that uh, performed um, for us at the South Carolina Conference, uh, representing Richland One to all of the school districts there uh, uh, in the state of South Carolina that attended our, our conference. And then I want to apologize publicly to Sandell um, because I was supposed to be there reading today, Ms. York, and I ended up at Weber um, helping to stuff bags. Uh, tonight, Dr. Witherspoon, they had a drive-through Tuesday Taco Tuesday mm -hmm. drive through So the children are getting tacos on Tuesday, the celebration, and they're getting math packets. And then in a partnership with Community Keys, along with the Lower Richland Alumni Foundation, each family is receiving um, gift bags. Mm -hmm. And those gift bags consist of household products, uh, food products as well as um, personal hygiene products. So I was down at, at Weber with uh, Dr. Summer Jones and a team stuffing bags for the majority of the morning. Well, actually, it was till 2 o'clock, um, making sure that that project was in place. So that is why I did not make it to Sandale um, to read, but I will come back and read two books to make up for missing <laughs> the one book. I um, also want to... Um, uh, shared, Dr. Witherspoon, I've, I've heard and I know the mass mandate has become a hot topic in discussion from about 13 of our PTA leaders. And, you know, as I looked at those numbers and who I'm hearing from, Commissioner Bishop, mm -hmm. it totals about 16,000 of our children that are asking that we strongly look at maintaining our mass mandate. I did share with them that I would share that with you, the schools that they are representing, uh, comes to about 16,000 of the students in Richland One. Um, so I just want to put that plug in there because I, as I've told them, I would make sure that you heard the same information I've heard from them. And it goes back to some of the health issues and concerns that a lot are expressing, not just the safety of the children. And, and with that being said, you know, Commissioner um, Ms. Wilson was on the call with me. One of the things that I do with chat with the chair is I ask the children, how do they feel? We talked about COVID for a very long time. We were on the phone, uh, on the video conference rather, uh, with Dreer and a few other schools. And to hear the students say to me, you know, the mass is not bothering them. They're able to function. And, and, and I've got witnesses to this that, you know, once they put it on, they forget it's on. Um, they go by their, their regular day. And what was really interesting is to hear the students say, the students say, this. Ms. Wilson can, can agree to this. Ms. Harris, you all are trying to keep us safe. We don't want our, as a matter of fact, they said we don't want our teachers getting sick and we don't want to get sick. We want to be in class. And this was a, some very diverse groups of students. So I want to share that with the board. That's why we have to consider the sentiments of all when it comes to the mass, um, that we are hearing the voice of everyone. And Doc, we may need, Dr. Whisper, we may need to look at a survey 
to hear from the parents, the students, the, the faculty, uh, because the students are talking to us, mm -hmm. and 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 they have not said anything negative. You know, I was expecting it. I was, you know, expecting them to say no, whatever. But that's not what happened. And and this was a, a, a group of students that was ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth graders that that shared this with me. Um, as it relates to our dashboard, because I heard someone mention earlier about the numbers on the dashboard, those numbers on the dashboard are from those cases that are reported to the district, correct? That is correct. So the dashboard numbers are not really a definite, definite of what's happening in the district. It's those parents and those faculty members that report to their schools and the information is communicated up. So there, there is room for that to be an error when it comes to our COVID numbers because of that simple reason, correct? Okay, just wanted to, to clarify that to everyone. The dashboard is not fail-proof. It's, 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 a, it's a projection of those that have submitted their information to us. And then I, I wanted to also mention another thing. Um, so I heard someone mention about food costs during the December break. I know that this brought up, came up in a discussion that we had had, Mr. Devine, some time ago mm -hmm. with the P-card. And um, I remembered that purchase and I'm gonna tell you why I remember the purchase. Um, we had a special election, Mr. Carlin, I remember that. And we tried to get it moved, remember Mr. Bishop? Because our faculty was out on Christmas break. But our janitors sucked it up, yep. their break, and they worked polls. For those that don't realize, our schools are election sites. Mm -hmm. They work polls, and they, could not leave because as building managers, you cannot leave. And I believe that the purchase was to make sure we fed our staff. And I just wanted to share that because sometimes things will be put out here to look a certain type of way. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize the sacrifice that employees are making. They were on break, they could have told us no. And ain't a thing we could have done about it. But they chose to show up and to work those polls because we had a special election that year uh, due to a board member uh, leaving. And, and because of the timeline, the way the bylaws and the policy is set up, we had to have a special election right before Christmas. I think it was a week right before New Year's. Mm -hmm. You know, So I just wanted to put that out there in the air because I know we love to talk about stuff. We need to put that out there, okay? We had, we had janitors that sacrificed their holiday break to, to sit in a building for 12 hours and could not leave so that the citizens of the community here in Richland One could be able to cast their vote. And lastly, I have something I wanna share with my colleagues, and if you guys can get teed up to play this. I was sitting at home watching television, and I looked up and I saw this commercial and it was us. And I wanna share this commercial because I appreciate the way we are highlighting what's happening in our career program. Our district, Richland One, is the only district in the state of South Carolina that offers all 16, all, A-L-L, -L, 16 career pathways. So kudos to our CTO folk, CTE folk, kudos to Dr. Witherspoon for pushing this initiative. So if you wanna see some of the programs that we are offering, I saw this on 10. So if you want to see some of the programs, they are teed up to play this commercial. I want you guys to take a look. Uh, IT, if y'all can take it away for me. <laughs> <laughs> Little Darcy. Welcome to Richland One CTE program. Richland One's career and technical education programs are not the vocational programs of yesteryear. Our innovative real-world programs help students become career ready, earn college credit, and receive state and nationally recognized industry certifications. We partner with business and industry to make sure our students have the skills employers want. Richland One is committed to passing the baton to the next generation of leaders and decision makers. We are preparing tomorrow's professionals today. Amazing. Now that's amazing. And that's a small glimpse. That was just the media, culinary art, arts, welding, megatronics, animal science, and CDL. And what was really interesting about it, I was watching it with my 22-year-old, and she, when she saw the dog, she says, oh my goodness, so we're doing veterinary programs now. Y'all not, y'all didn't do this when we were there. But, you know, congratulations to Richland One. That, that was a very powerful commercial. And Commissioner Myers, what made it powerful was there were constituents that started calling me and was like, 
oh my God, this is awesome. So continue, Ms. York, to tell our story. All right, Commissioner Clyburn. Yeah, I have one more thing because I. <laughs> okay. And I, I really did want to end on that nice, wonderful, positive Lord note, Jesus. but I didn't um, get my hand up fast enough. I'm sorry. But I just wanted to go back to um, and something you said, so it's your fault. Something you said uh, triggered my thinking here. Um, you were talking about the, the numbers, um, you know, of, for the COVID 19. And I wanted to, I did a little bit of research while we were sitting here because of uh, one of the public participation comments. Uh, someone mentioned the, um, the rates of uh, cases, you know, across the state, they've gone down. And nationwide, um, our medical, some medical professionals are saying, um, that it's time to relax the ma mass mandate. And I know we're going to look at that um, in some months. Um, but I also wanted to m mention a percentage, a, a number that I did a little bit of research on. New Jersey, that was, they, they were mentioned, they mentioned that the um, mass mandate was relaxed in New Jersey. Their rate of vaccination, one dose, 88% mm -hmm. of the state vaccinated. South Carolina, 62.9% of our race, uh, residents are vaccinated with one dose. So, I mean, that's just a comparison, one comparison. 74% fully vaccinated. So that means you have, you're double vaccinated or you're boosted, you know, and you're also, you're boosted for some of them. But the 32, boosted, fully boosted, so fully vaccinated is 32%. 74% just fully vaccinated. So I just wanted to make that, um, point of clarification as well. We have a difference, you know, here in South Carolina. And I know it's not, you know, exact, you know, everything that I'm saying, and it's not a guarantee that we're all of a sudden, all of these uh, uh, infections are gonna, you know, come out of nowhere. And I don't think anybody is saying that, but how many of us are talking to our teachers? And, you know, when, when Parents are saying, and I understand the, the frustration, and I'm not faulting parents, but are parents really going to each and every one of our classrooms and hearing the fear, you know, from, from some of our teachers? You know, I've, I've experienced a teacher loss, you know, due to COVID-19. And I know some of you have as well, but a lot of them are saying that they're going to flee. And, and, you know, we, we say we're, we are concerned about teacher retention. That is something that is real to some of these teachers. They're afraid of taking things back to their own families. And some of them have said that they would leave. So I just wanted to make that um, point. And I hate to end on that note. I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can always play the commercial again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did want to end on a, on a, on a note. You, you cued me for this. But today is Commissioner Jamie Devine's birthday. That's right. Happy birthday. What a leader to be here in a board oh, meeting yes. and celebrating his birthday. Can we give it up for Jamie? I would sing, let's say let's sing happy birthday, but I would have to hand the mic to Sherry and Dr. Brazar. But mm -hmm. can we just give a round of applause to our colleague, please? Happy birthday. And then our superintendent celebrated a birthday on yesterday. So can we give him a round of applause as well? And then last week was Dr. Bishop's birthday. So we appreciate you as well. I think y'all planned this. <laughs> I was supposed to have a cake here today, but I was stuffing bags this morning at, at Weber, so I didn't get to make you cakes. Uh, but happy birthday to, to all of you. Thank you for all that you do in this district. Our work is not easy. Some may think it is, and think it's just sitting at this table and saying yes or no, but it's not. It's a lot of wear and tear on you mentally and emotionally. Even in this pandemic, the thousand year flood, I mean, we could write a book, a bestseller novel, uh, but a lot of times you sacrifice it by being away from your families and your children and everybody else. So thank you so much guys for what you do for this awesome district. Um, at this time, we'll move on now to um, 10.3, which is the approval of appointment of the Richland One representative to the Richland County Assessment Appeal Board, and that is to be presented by me. 
Um, we have a candidate that did uh, put in for that position by the name of Mr. Hamilton Jacobs. So we do need a motion to approve the appointment um, to go forward at this time. Madam Chair, I move that we uh, approve the name said to present uh, to the Ariston County Board of Assessment Appeals. Second. Okay, there's a motion to approve uh, Mr. Hamilton Jacobs to the uh, Richland One uh, rep representative on the County Assessment Appeal Board. It's been seconded by Commissioner Clyburn. We'll open the floor at this time for any questions or comments. Seeing none, hearing none, we will call for the vote. Okay, the vote is 6-0, uh, uh, it was unanimous, so congratulations and thank you, Mr. Hamilton and Jacobs, I see you in the audience. If you would just stand and be recognized right quick. We know you will represent us very well on the appeals board. Also a Richland One parent, so thank you so very much. And graduate. And gra I'm sorry, and graduate of Richland One, so thank you so very much for, for being here on tonight and thank you so much for taking up the helm and willing to serve to represent this district on the appeal board. We know you will represent us well. At this time, we'll move on to 11, which is the office of the superintendent, if there's anything left for him to report, because we tried to report <laughs> it all out. <laughs> uh, but at this time, 11.1, Dr. Witherspoon, superintendent's report. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. You all did take a lot of, um, <laughs> of the remarks this, this evening, but uh, uh, a lot of those bear repeating. So again, thank you. Um, First off, on um, last Tuesday, a week ago, I had an opportunity to present the state of the district, um, uh, okay. certainly to the board uh, of, of commissioners and, and, and uh, our, our, our staff and families, to our community at large. Uh, and it was a, um, you know, the state of, state of the district is an opportunity to talk about not only what we have done um, uh, in this district, say, from the previous state of the district to, to the, the, the year um, and then what we're looking at. But we also had an opportunity this time to share um, uh, some of the things that we, we, we've done in the district that in that cumulative effect, number of students that have been impacted, uh, the programming that, that meets the needs of our, of, of our students um, has, been, has, has been mentioned this evening. Uh, and, and I guess in my, 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 my passion of sharing that information, I, when I recognized our high school principals, um, our principals, see, I just did it again. I said high school principals, and I, I meant to say all of our principals, and it came out high school. And then uh, if, if, if you recall, I made the comment, they're shy this evening because I did only see a few standing up. And then I see why. So I was reminded about 9 o'clock last Tuesday <laughs> that, hey, you... you um, uh, you forgot to, to, to recognize all of, uh, of our principals in the district. So I, I did uh, share with them uh, uh, last evening that I would um, certainly mention um, um, that, that misstatement uh, from last week, but I, um, and, and I would do that this evening uh, because we do appreciate, as has been said, during COVID and things that have been happening and the growth uh, and the achievements that, that we have made in this district and continue to make is certainly um, that, that, that linkage, if you will, from, from the, the, the board vision, mission, um, guidance, and, and how that connects and, and links to um, you know, this administration, to our schools and to our classrooms, those, those principals and that, that school-based um, leadership team and instructional teams are critical in that equation. So, um, again, as I shared in writing to our principals, my apologies for that, and I certainly do recognize uh, the important role that our principals and all of our administrators um, um, play, and certainly the accomplishments that we have made and we continue to make in this district on behalf of our students, our families, and our community at large. And, and I would say that, uh, you know, if you have not had an opportunity to um, um, view uh, the state of the district that is located on our website, um, and, and you may um, um, you know, visit that and again to, to hear and see 
um, the accomplishments, as well as the challenges and things that we face, and, and what we're what we're doing about those things. So again, to our to our principals, thank you all so very much um, for for what you do in this regard. Now, since our last meeting, three of Dreer High School seniors were named finalists in the 2022 National Merit Scholarship Program, which awards scholarships to academically talented students across the country. These students were, were first selected as semifinalists, which is a pre prestigious distinction award awarded to less than 1% of all U.S. high school seniors. Congratulations and best wishes to our National Merit Scholarship finalists as they go on to compete for 7,500 scholarships worth nearly $30 million. Their names are posted on our website at richlandone.org, and scholarship winners will be announced during the spring and summer. Also, four Richland One students have been named to the 2022 All-State Band by the South Carolina Band, Associate, Band Directors Association. Three Drew High School students were chosen for the All-State Senior Band, and a Creighton Middle School student was named to the All-State Junior Band. Again, congratulations to these talented students, and their names are also posted on our website. And it has been stated, we're proud of that 12 of our varsity basketball teams made it to the state playoffs this year. Six teams are still in contention, as of a few minutes ago, uh, still in contention for state championship. C.A. Johnson, W.J. Keenan, A.C. Flora Boys, and the Lower Richland, uh, and the Lower Richland um, sure. Girls, W.J. Keenan, and A.C. Flora Girls teams. And good luck to all of our teams. Congratulations also um, go to the Columbia High School girls team, the Lower Richland boys team, the Dreer High School boys and girls team, and the Eau Claire girls and boys teams on their outstanding seasons. Thirteen of our high school wrestlers qualified for state individual wrestling championships, which, be, which will be held this weekend, February 25th and 26th in Anderson. Wrestlers from C.A. Johnson, Columbia, Dreer, Eau Claire, W.J. Keenan, and Lower Richland will be competing for state titles. And good luck to all of those student athletes. Congratulations to Mr. Chris Dinkins, our Director of Career and Technical Education, and his entire team for an outstanding internship and apprenticeship signing day last week. The event was held in conjunction with the City of Columbia as a part of our One City Future Ready Partnership. Nearly 140 of our CTE students will do internships and apprenticeships during the spring and summer with our city departments, district departments, as well as with several partner businesses and organizations. Thank you to the City of Columbia and all of our partners for providing real life work experiences that will help prepare our students for college and careers. The signing day is airing on Richland One TV, that's Spectrum Cable Channel 1303, and it can be viewed at any time on the R1 TV on demand on our website, as well as the R1 TV YouTube channel. Speaking of partnerships, through our partnership with the Auntie Karen Foundation, our students will have incredible opportunities to perform and form sometimes with legendary musical artists. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, February 24th, students will participate in a master class with Grammy-nominated singer Jeffrey Osborne. Mm -hmm. Mr. Osborne will share his experiences with students and answer their questions. He may also favor them with a song or two. Mm -hmm. and thank you to, the, to Karen Alexander Banks and her team for continuing to provide our students with these opportunities. We have several education-related observances this year, and this week, February 21st through 25th, is National Public Schools Week. The observance is designed to highlight and celebrate the importance of public education. And in Richland One, we are proud of our amazing students, our dedicated employees, and we are thankful for the support provided to our schools by our businesses, community partners, and volunteers. And again, as we celebrate public uh, public uh, National Public uh, Schools Week. Um, we know in, in, in Richland One that's every week of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, uh, the importance 
uh, that public schools uh, provide in, in educating our young folks and making sure uh, that they, as our um, mission statement says, uh, they're able to realize their dreams and potential as they leave us. Mm -hmm. And um, Commissioner Harris, I would add, and members of the board, in addition to, to our um, ads and, and, and our CTE Spotlight One that we're, uh, Ms. York's shop is, is putting together, um, we are in the process of having conversations and discussions with, with economic development um, agencies and, and, again, how we can provide opportunities for our students as, as we grow and, and um, have um, careers and job opportunities for our young people as they graduate uh, so that we, we keep our talent here in Columbia uh, and in the Midlands. And, um, and, and, and getting our students exposed to these uh, opportunities. And um, those meetings have been going very well. Uh, not only have we been able to share a lot of the great things that we do in the district, but these organizations are sharing with us and, and we're creating even more opportunities for exposure and options and opportunities uh, for our young people. So I just wanna thank those organizations uh, and, and all that we, we do to provide uh, for our young people. Uh, Madam Chair, that concludes my report at this time. Thank you so much, Dr. Witherspoon, for your report on this evening. Again, we tried to plug everything in on, with our <laughs> board report, um, but we did want to celebrate a job well done on our state of the district uh, address. Great job. I think if you had to talk about everything that we're doing in this district, we would have been sitting there for at least 24 hours. Yes. You, you summed it up well, but there were a lot of things that you didn't get a chance to mention because you couldn't put it all in there. But certainly want to thank you again. Our community, our constituents are watching those reports, and they are really uh, pleased to see the growth and the strength of this district. So thank you so very much for sharing that we were at the highest with graduating and we're at the lowest with dropping out. Mm -hmm. And I think you can't, you can't ask for anything better than to know that all the meat in between. And at the end of the day, this district is determined to continue to build strong men and women. So thank you so much for that report. Any other um, questions or comments for Dr. Witherspoon at this time? Okay, seeing none, hearing none. Um, we will make one announcement for make that announcement. Uh, if you are a Richland One graduate doing some great things out here, I am gonna ask that you please uh, reach out to Kieran York's office because we wanna hear your story. Uh, she's doing an awesome segment called From Grads to Greatness. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I'm learning a lot about a lot of people. I didn't even know I'm eating at folks restaurants, didn't know these were graduates. So job well done to your department. If you are a graduate, Mr. Hamilton and Jacobs, others out there, you know, let's hear your story. Reach out to Karen York's office. If you don't have a number, just call 231-7000X for Karen York or communications. <laughs> and they will transfer you. Karen, you're going to get a lot of calls tomorrow. Um, and they will transfer you to her and, and she'll send a team out, set it up, and you get to hear, we get to hear your story. You know, the greatest way to measure success is to see it in action. You know, we can talk about test scores and a whole lot of other things, but to see folks such as Reverend Aaron, Dr. Doctor, all that other good stuff, Bishop yes, over yes. here, he's a product of this district. You know, and he has a story to tell, and so many others have a story to tell. We want to hear those stories because those stories we use in our classrooms. If you can dream it, you can become it. Mm. So it's important that we hear your stories. We don't have to go to California to the movie sh streams and, and so forth and recording artists. We have them right here in Richland One doing great things. So please help us tell the story of Richland One by calling Kieran York, 231-7000, okay? I want to remind the audience that masks are required when attending the board meetings. So as you leave, if you would please be so kind to, to mask up until you're outside. Again, thank you all for being here to our first back in person meeting. Um, and one announcement, next regular scheduled meeting of this board of commissioners will be held on March 8th, 2022 at C.A. Johnson High School at 2219 Barnaville Road here in Columbia, South Carolina. Without any objection from the board, you can now consider yourselves dismissed. Thank you, have a safe evening.